Half in the bag. Jay and Mike are frauds. Customer. <clears throat> Lightning fast VCR repair, this is Mike. Hey, hey, is your refrigerator running? No, it's not. Can you fix it? No. Uh, I have to go now. Please don't go. Hello? Hello? So, were there any customers while I was gone? <sighs> no, but a homeless man did come in and asked to use the floor as a bathroom. Oh, why well, didn't you just let him? I've been doing that since we opened. Oh, I've been using the bathroom. There's one in the back. Oh. You, you saw it before? That's number one when it gets to the top. No, from the other hand, you don't have to stop. You know, we have to do something that isn't a horrible waste of time. Yeah. I've got it! Let's go watch the new Resident Evil movie. Jay, that's a terrible idea. Let's go watch all the Resident Evil movies. President Obama, we're on the case. Hello and welcome to Half in the Bag, I'm Jay. And I'm Mike. And in preparation for seeing the latest Resident Evil movie, we uh, recently locked ourselves in a tiny room and did a marathon straight through of all four of the original movies. That's right, and we invited our friend Rich Evans to join us. At the beginning of the 21st century, the Umbrella Corporation had become the largest commercial entity in the United States. Not Isn't that Walmart? <laughs> <laughs> and this is true, this isn't bullshit. We actually did watch the movie straight through. We started at what, like six, seven-ish, and went till one or two in the morning. Yeah, one after the other. One after the other. Um, it and was... it should be noted that neither of us uh, have seen any of the Resident Evil films. Um, I, I saw the first one oh, uh, a long time ago. Way to make a liar out of me. Uh, I'd seen that one, but that was it, and I didn't remember anything about it. Um, and in rewatching it, it reminded me why I had forgotten everything about it. Mm. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> all right. They dropped all the sound off like a Sam Raimi movie. <laughs> well, going into our marathon, what was your, your first thoughts when the first movie started and we were a little ways along and you realized you had another uh, 25 hours to go of Resident Evil movies? Um, sheer terror. Mm. Um, I, I, I've always heard that the Resident Evil movies were bad. Yeah. Um, and I, I always thought, well, I, I understand what the movies are. What you get out of it is action and violence and blood and zombies and sexy ladies kicking zombies and zombie dogs and all that stuff. And the plot isn't that important. They're, they're hard movies to really get upset about. Like, they're kind of lame, but I, I wasn't angry while watching them. I wasn't irritated until we get to maybe the fourth one, which we'll talk about. That was the first one, but the rest of them are just, I was actually surprised at how tame they were. Like the f first and second one specifically, it felt like it should have been a PG-13 movie, yeah. but there was a little, couple little bits of nudity, but there was next to no gore. Oh. When people got shot, there was no blood bursts or anything. They were incredibly lame. Is there anything less cool than score that's supposed to sound like rock music? It always sounds lame. Yeah, but it's very cheap to make. I guess. The target audience for this should be, you know, little 13 year old kids or something, but it's R rated so they can't get in. So it's amazing that the series has lasted as long as it has. Yeah, yeah. Well, the first one was rated R, but it didn't seem like a, an R movie. No, not at um, all. And, and the movies are, they are what they are, but they're also kind of frustrating because with just a little bit more effort, y you know, you could write a better story. There are so many creative elements to deal with, um, like zombie apocalypse, the world ending, all these laboratories and all these different things. But each movie is always Alice teams up with a handful of mercenary soldier types 
and they have to get from point A to point B, yeah. and then it, it, it even sets it up like a video game. And the first one, there's literally maps showing, here is where you are, here is where you need to get to. Yeah, and, it, and sure, the series is based on video games, but it doesn't have to be that methodical. And that um, at least it didn't go to the extremes that Uwe Boll's House of the Dead did, where they literally interspliced uh, footage of the video game into the movie. Oh, it's amazing. That sounds horrible. Even though it had this, this vast creative environment to work with, it always managed to pull everything back into the constraints of the premise of the first movie. Yeah, well, and the Except frustrating... Except for the fourth one. Yeah, we'll get to the fourth one. Uh, but the frustrating part is that they're all focused on the Alice character, which isn't really a character. Yeah. There's absolutely nothing to her. She does not grow. You don't learn anything about her throughout the entire series of movies. Right. And it doesn't help that it's played by Mila Jovovich. And you can't tell anything from her facial expression. <laughs> I like her as an actress generally, but I'm getting nothing here. Just looking around. Yeah, she, she doesn't, doesn't look, look confused. confused. She doesn't look or concerned yeah. or scared or anything. It's just blank stares. Yeah. We were watching the first movie and we were talking about the fact that you could cut to any random uh, close-up of her mm -hmm. in that movie and you would absolutely have no idea what emotion she was supposed to be conveying. Do you think there was a moment when Paul W.S. Anderson was looking at the monitor while they were shooting the first movie and you'd see these close-ups of Mila Jovovich with absolutely no emotion whatsoever? And he said, and that's the moment I fell in love with her. That's when I knew. Oh, Mila. What? What are her strengths? What are her weaknesses? What are her faults? Yeah. What is she vulnerable to? Mm -hmm. I don't know. She just kicks in slow motion. Yeah, well they made her have amnesia in the first one so they didn't have to do that. <laughs> so they didn't have to bother wasting time with characterization. Well, you learn a little bit throughout the series of movies about her sort of backstory with the Umbrella Corporation, but mm -hmm. it still doesn't tell you about her as a person, really. Right, yeah, yeah. You know she worked, previously worked for the Umbrella Corporation and then now she doesn't. Yeah. Yeah! <laughs> wow. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> there it goes. <laughs> Is it riding the motorcycle? Yes! <laughs> it and the motorcycle both went up. And oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Speaking of the Umbrella Corporation, yes. uh, going into the second movie, um, what, what more do we learn about the Umbrella Corporation in um, that film? That they're evil? Yes, yes. This is the most uh, single-minded uh, conglomerate in movie history, the Umbrella Corporation, where you're constantly wondering throughout the series of movies, what is their goal? What are they actually trying to accomplish? And it basically is just to be evil. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and they, apparently they have unlimited resources, even after the economies of the world have collapsed. Yeah, even after there, there's no uh, life left on the planet. Even after they destroy the world because of their bioweapons research that accidentally destroys the world, they, they're still like, we must stop the world and we must kill more people. They're still doing like comical bad guy stuff, yeah. but I guess if there was an applicable movie to insert comical villains, <laughs> it would be the Resident Evil series. What? Oh. What? <laughs> uh, Resident what? Evil in space! The satellites are watching. <laughs> oh! What? <laughs> what? Why is the Umbrella Corp still doing everything? The world is gone. <laughs> They're still doing evil research. They still have uh, the power to maintain all these elaborate facilities. Yeah. So the, throughout the first at least three movies, uh, we discovered that they kind of up the ante with each one as far as the location of it. Like the first one, underground facility. You're all going to die down here. We started the second one, uh, walled off city. What is the bigger picture here like? Raccoon City is in the United States, I assume? Like, yes, I'm going to assume. So there's no, like, once it's, 
they shut off a city and declare martial law by a corporation. It's just not a problem. Apparently. And then the third one, you get to the whole planet has been to destroyed and turned into a desert. So it's like, what do you what do you do after that? This movie's great so far. The, the, so far, this is the most entertaining one. That's because they haven't introduced some dumb plot yet. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, they say that the whole planet is a desert. That somehow the T virus. Somehow people turning into zombies caused all the oceans to dry out. Well, the T virus did something to the environment. But even though the whole planet's a desert, they still happen to be riding around in the desert of the U.S. Yeah. For some reason, they're just driving around like California. Areas that were are conveniently deserts already. Yeah, yeah. When the third one started, because the first movie was was pretty lame and kind of boring. And it's just like, okay, it wasn't, it wasn't painful to sit through. You're just like, all right, I get it, whatever. Second one, kind of more of the same. Uh, and then the third one actually was a little more visually interesting. Yeah, I uh, noticed that right off the bat. Yeah, the, um, it looked better. It looked like a, a higher production quality. Yeah, and the zombie makeup looked. And the a zombie lot makeup was great. It was like classic uh, Tom Savini Day of the Dead era zombie makeup. Yeah. Oddly enough, the movie itself rips off quite a bit from Day of the Dead too. Not just the look of the zombies, but there's the the fenced off uh, entrance to the underground facility, and there's even a helicopter there. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's a scene that is exactly like the scene with Bob from Day of the Dead, where right. they have the phone. Say hello to your Aunt Alicia. Right. That's right, Bob. Say hello. Come on, Captain, give me a break, will you? Say hello to your Aunt Alicia. <sighs> this is amazing. He knows what it is. Are you saying that Paul W.S. Anderson is the Carlos Mencia of the filmmaking community? Hello, Aunt Alicia. This becomes something that we notice throughout the, the course of the next few movies, too. It starts to become more and more apparent, the, the ripping off of other movies. Yeah, it's just almost like they started with a blank slate, yeah. the video game. And you know what, too, the zombies never really seem that important in the movies. And, and that's no. kind of what, like, in Romero zombie movies, obviously, it's the focal point. Like, their underground lab in Day of the Dead, it's like, okay, the, they're trying to figure out a way to domesticate the zombies. Um, well, it's all, all three of those original Romero movies are about how does the world deal with yeah. this this thing. And and these movies, the the Resident Evil movies, they have zombies in them, but at the same time, it's it's movies about trying to defeat or fight this Umbrella Corporation. This evil corporation. Yeah, and at the same time, the evil corporation's goals are sort of bland and vague and. Uh, nonsensical yeah. so it, there is no specific focus of what each movie is about it's not a survivor movie you know because the characters are disposable Alice's character is boring and flat yeah so it's not really like okay well uh, the bad guys motivations are vague there's zombies everywhere but we really like all these characters because um, we don't we don't know anything about any of them yeah oh my favorite characters back he had so many great moments in the last movie. It's that guy. It's that guy. I recognize him. So yeah, the third movie, uh, a little bit better than the first two. A little more interesting visually. Mm. Um, mm -mm. Third one sucked. The desert one. That one got boring. What's the point of these movies? Everyone just dies. <laughs> yeah. Not that you care about them in the first place, but... Well, I think they're just supposed to be action movies, but the action in all of them is so boring. The opening of the third one, to me, was more exciting than anything that happened in the first two movies as a whole. Uh, and it looked neat. I liked the idea of the, the post-apocalypse desert landscape, Mad Max with zombies. Sure. Uh, and then, at the end of the movie, we discover that there is a clone army of Alice's. I'm coming for you. And uh, I'm going to be bringing a few of my friends. Oh, my God. If there's, like, ten Mila Jovoviches in the next movie, that I would be amazing. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> that idea uh, sounded fun. The idea of this this army of Mila's. So what? So what happened when we watched the fourth one? There, there was a couple Mila's. Yeah. Here we go. They de they delivered with what they promised. Yay! It looks horrible, but they delivered with what they promised. <laughs> 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 uh. <laughs> oh and they can't God. take the helicopter down? 
This is schlock. <laughs> this is schlock. Yeah, this yeah. Is schlock. The opening of that fourth movie is, is actually a lot of fun. Like, I was entertained while watching that. Yeah, it, it was using the creative elements of the series to its advantage. Yeah. And, uh, and in silliness, it went right over that line where it was good. Yeah. And you're like, okay, this is fun. Um, but then, then they had to rush it, rush through it. Yeah, yeah. It's the opening scene, and then the 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 sequence ends with all the clones being killed. Oh no, they're all gonna get blown up. Oh no. There goes the whole entire. Is that that's all? It, that's gonna be it for the clones, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. And Mila Jovovich getting injected with something that takes away her superpowers. So the first part of that movie was just to tie up all the loose ends it was just to, from to, the third movie. Yeah, to Wait. get rid of everything. The last handful of survivors took a chopper to safety. Oh, the water's back. <sighs> oh, yeah, it was to tie up the last. It was It was just yeah. to get rid of everything that they introduced. Even the superpowers. Yeah. Wow. The, these movies are really great examples of writing yourself out of a hole yeah. with just logic that makes no sense. Like, well, it's like I was saying after the the fifth movie. Um, it's like uh, like when little kids would make up a game and they would play it on the playground, but then the one kid would keep changing the rules to yeah. make sure that he won. Yeah. It's like, wait, no, what? The, that you can do this now? Mm -hmm. It's the lowest common denominator of storytelling. Yeah. Well, by the time we got to the fourth one, that's that was the one that uh, uh, killed us, that, that ruined Broke our us. spirits. Rich, this is bullshit. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. This is like a bad Flash Gordon TV series. <laughs> what happened to Alaska? Why do they live? <laughs> what the fuck is going on? Pleasure making your acquaintance. Is, is this on a green screen? Do they have to green screen a shower scene? Like, like I don't think it's, I think it just looks that way because of whatever the okay. type of 3D cameras they were Wait, using. Wait, stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, where's the water? What happened? The water shut off. Oh no, don't. But it didn't shut off in the shot. It shut off on the edit. And now it's back. Oh. What? That's just a continuity or a blatant. One. No, no, there, there's no way. That was done intentionally. But it didn't no. make any sense. No, no. What? You can still hear it. Where is it coming from? You can still hear it. Is it? What? No. What? The, uh... <laughs> so the fourth movie, by the time we got to that one, we'd sat through three movies with a couple fun moments, but mostly sort of boring. Um, get to the fourth one, and the story is completely nonsensical, and and does and you can't follow anyone as far as what their motivation is, Fourth where they're trying bad. to get to. So we were really, really wore down by this point yeah. in the series. Find just in fresh human DNA, I could redress the balance. What? Under your crew in and ship. And then Alice gets on the boat and she confronts the evil Matrix looking villain. And then that's when the movie broke us. Yeah, it literally snapped our brains in half. <laughs> this is borderline experimental. <laughs> this makes no sense at all. Ha 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 ha!